Hi everyone, I'm uh, Boots Allen, and the fly I'm trying here for you today is the uh, elk liver nymph. Um, it's a very dark colored fly. Uh, when it's done in a very small size, a lot of people think we'll be imitating Amelitis or a mahogany dun. Um, I like them in a bigger size version, and I'll use them basically in the same, same way I'd use like a size 8 or size 10 pheasant tail size 8 or size 10 prince nymph. Um, it would be a, a tractor nymph for um, used in tandem with a, a smaller, more imitative nymph, like a lightning bug. But uh, make no mistake, just like the prince and the uh, pheasant tail, this fly does pick up fish, but I do like it in the uh, larger size. So getting going here, uh, going to be using about a size 10 hook with a large gap. This is a, uh, a uh, Dairiki, uh, size 10, uh, 700, and a basically a uh, gunmetal brass bead on it. Get that put into the vise. We'll get going here, getting our thread on. This is basically your simple six-up thread. Um, if you wanted to go with a larger thread, a, a three-aught, that would be no problem for a big fly like this. And you are wrenching down on some of this material, as you'll see. We're going to get going with a tail, the tail being uh, one of my favorite tail materials, which is ostrich. I've used, uh, uh, this is a black ostrich roll. I've used a lot of this uh, material for a lot of flies. And uh, do adore it. It's a great trailing shuck material as well for emergers. Uh, we're going to be using it as a tail here. I'm going to bust off about three pieces here. And right there at the very, very top. Uh, you either want to go for a fly this size at the very, very top or at the base. And I'm going to use right around. around three pieces here. Three tips, basically. Get that coasted down there and come on back to the base of that tail. Okay, and here's the fun part. The body material the abdomen, I should say. It's going to be a dubbing brush, but it's going to be a wire dubbing brush. Uh, this one here is composed of Microlex as well as EP fibers um, and really, really small crystal flash. And uh, this can be created. You'll see there's wire in here. Uh, look right at the base there. There's some wire here. This is created by uh, basically, I take this, I hook it to a um, to a drill, and I set it on a very low speed. Um, before I turn it on, I go ahead and take my wire, come back, come forward, and then back over it, connect it where you connect the other piece of, of uh, wire to the drill, and then you'll put your material in, pinched in between the two pieces of wire. And then you start that drill on a very, very slow speed. If you don't have a slow speed drill, it probably won't work that well. And this begins to twist, and you form a dubbing brush, just like you would if you had dubbing brush formed with thread. And uh, uh, it's not necessarily a new concept, but people are starting to use it a lot more uh, for uh, designing flies for trout. The other thing that's happening now is this material is being uh, pre-manufactured, and I believe uh, E.P. Puglosi, or uh, Enrico Puglosi is the one that's, uh, that's manufacturing uh, this stuff on the market currently. So anyway, so this is one that I've made. Um, again, rubber legs, um, E.P. fibers, and a uh, little kind of small micro crystal flash. Let me get that tied to this body. And this is where having a 3 aught thread is probably worth having, but 6 aught is going to work just fine. So bring that forward, that thread forward to right about there. So you're covering about, I got about a quarter of the hook, 20% to a quarter of the hook 
uh, uh, covered with the thread going from the bend up to the uh, up to the eye. Now I begin to give this a wind. This is going to look really ugly at first. Right there's where I'm going to end it. And again, wrench down on this material because it's that it is that wire. And again, three out would be great. But six out can work just as well. Crim that off. I'm going to use my rougher pair of scissors here. Now you have just a big bushy body there. Now what you do is you're just going to start trimming it away. I'm going to spin this up like so, trim the bottom of it. Now trim the flanks. So that is your abdomen right there that you have. And you can see that's been uh, trimmed away and a little bit tighter. And if you look closely in there, that wire that I use as a dubbing brush, um, that's forming uh, a, ribbing, a ribbed appearance inside the fly. You can see the little strands there. And I think that's a pretty unique quality with this kind of dubbing brush. So you do get that ribbed appearance if you want it. Clean it up just a bit more. Now we're going to go ahead and throw on the wing casing. And the wing case casing is going to be a uh, crinkle mirror flash uh, right there. This is the root beer version. Um, this is used with uh, a lot of other popular flies, uh, Morishinato, uh, Mayhairs, and Princes. Uh, that's the uh, uh, material they will use um, as, a, uh, as a wing casing. So I'll go ahead and just trim off a small piece of that. So a clump like so, I'm going to Go ahead and thin this up just a bit. That will be tied in right there. So we're going to leave that sit like so. Now we're going to go ahead and do the thorax. And the thorax is going to be ice dubbing, basically. I'll show this material to you. Um, you can see that. That's basically a, um, what's called a Bloody Mary version. Um, black, red, purple, maroon. And you can see the little flash in there as well. So Hairline Dubbing does this as well as, uh, I believe, Wopsy will make, uh, or Spirit River, I'm sorry, will make. Um, material like this and um, a lot of different fly shops carry it and uh, some online retailers will carry it as well. So we will get that dubbed on to our thread. in and ready to roll here. So 
So that's your thorax. This gets pulled forward to create the wing casing. I'm going to whip finish this. So there's your fly. Now what I'm going to do next is take epoxy, um, get the resin and the harder out. Little tiny dab. I'm actually going to do it right here on my little base. And you'll see on this uh, uh, pedestal stand, I've got plenty of little hardened places. So I'll take a little dab of resin. You'll see just how small of an amount I'm going to use here. Add the hardener to it. Very, very small because this is just one fly. Get a mix, it'll turn into a slight opaque color. And that little amount I have now right here on my bodkin is placed right there. And you're just going to let that harden. And that is basically the exact same thing you do with a flashback pheasant tail or a flashback prince. Placing that epoxy on there gives it that little bubble effect. Um, you can put this in a rotor, which is what I will do. I'll let that rotor slowly turn that and cure. But if you place it correctly, you can leave it just like this, and uh, it'll slowly harden. Uh, this is about a five-minute setting, um, and if you're mass-producing flies, then you're basically taking this out and putting it in a rotor. The other thing you can do is if you're tying up a bunch of these flies, you will basically take, tie up, oh, a half a dozen, a dozen, and then mix your resin and your hardener together and do all 12 of them at once and then put them in a rotor and let them spin. But that's the elk liver nymph. Um, smaller sizes, it can imitate a, a uh, mahogany dun or an amylitis, uh, something like that. Uh, but I use it as kind of a, a general attractor nymph and uh, works like gangbusters on a lot of water. You'll notice this, is a, this has that purple, purple and black color to it. And that's a very, very popular color with uh, a lot of flies these days, particularly because we know a lot more about trout, one of it being that purple and blue. Those are colors that they can't necessarily see from a long distance. But what they can see um, is they can see this uh, uh, basically in lower light conditions, and uh, so late at night or at dusk.